we're going to go ahead now and we're going to create our recipe detail page so we'll create a new template in our recipes template directory and we'll call this recipe detail we'll then go ahead to our views and we will import our generic view called detail view so again it's a class-based view it's one of the generics and the purpose of the detail view is to get a single object from our database so this one is going to just then return a single object back to our front end in our context so we'll go ahead here and we'll create a new class going to call it recipe detail and we will then pass in our detail view. So this is actually going to have the same parameters as the list view so we'll go ahead and we'll copy those in and we're going to change this for recipe instead of recipes because it's a single object that we're sending back not a list of objects this time and we need to replace recipes with the recipe detail.html I'm going to go ahead now and install a package called black so that I can make our code Pepe compliant so I'm going to pip install the package black so from here I can run python dash m dash m being for module we specify the module is black and I'm going to give it the recipes directory okay so if we go now into our source control we can see that it has pep8 formatted our code so black likes everything to be double quotes which is why it has changed all of those but at least it will be consistent so that will have formatted everything in all of our files so we'll go ahead now and go back to our code so we'll go into our URL patterns now and we're going to import our new recipe detail class so we'll go ahead and create a new path this time I'm going to pass in a primary key through the URL so I'm gonna say that this is our slug and it's going to be the PK which is our primary key so because we haven't specified uh, a unique field in our model um, Django automatically creates an ID um, so unless you're using like a UUID or something it will just start at one and it will go up one at each time and that is our unique identifier for that row in our database so um, we're going to pass that through the URL pattern this time in order to let our detail view know which record it is f that we're looking for okay so um, we will pass that back when we call the view from our template so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while so we're going to go ahead then and put in our recipe detail and as normal that will be as view and we will give it a name of recipe detail Now that our URL is done we'll go ahead over to our recipe detail page and we'll begin making our template so we'll go ahead with our extending the base.html we'll open up our block title this one I'm going to call recipe detail and I'm also going to give it the recipe title so that that shows in our tab at the top of our browser so if you remember when we created our view we added the context name recipe so because it's a single object we don't need to iterate through this one in order to access it so we can just use it straight away We'll now go ahead and open up our block content tag and close that up.
So inside here, I'm going to create a div and that's going to have a class of container. Within our container, I'm going to create a recipe info class. So that will be div dot recipe info. I'm going to give it a margin top of three and some padding one. I'm then going to create a div for our image with a class of recipe image. We'll then create our image tag. So our source will be our recipe.image.ul. We're going to give it an alt attribute of our recipe image alt. And we're going to give this one a class of recipe pick. Now, staying within our recipe info div, we're going to create a new div to have our recipe detail. So we'll create a div with a class of recipe detail. We'll create our h1 with our class of text center. We'll then have our recipe title in here. I'm then going to create a paragraph with text center. And we're going to say this is posted by our recipe user on our recipe posted date. So I'll now create a HR and we're going to put in our calories and cuisine. So we'll have a P tag and we'll have a strong tag and inside that we'll have our calories. Then outside of our strong tag we will add our recipe calories. We'll copy this one across and we'll rename it for our cuisine type. So underneath here, we're going to create an if statement. So we want to have some anchors there so the, the user can edit and delete their own recipes, but we only want the buttons to display if the logged in user is the user who created the recipe. So we'll have if request.user is equal to our recipe.user. So going back to our model, we have a foreign key field that is related to the user, which allows us to check that. So we'll close off our if statement and inside here we'll create a new div with a text center class and we'll create an anchor element with our button classes. So that's our BTN, BTN primary and our W25. So I'll just copy that one since we're going to have two. So in our first one, we are going to have edit and the second one will have delete. So we're not going to fill in the hrefs right yet because we don't have an edit or delete view. So that will only cause our page to crash if we try and load a URL that doesn't exist. So we'll go ahead now and underneath here between our closing container div, we'll create a new div and this one is going to be our recipe container. So we're going to create a new div which is going to be our ingredients div and we'll also give that some padding 3. We'll give it a heading level 2 of ingredients and we'll create a new paragraph and we will load in our recipe ingredients. So 
So if you remember now, when we created our first recipe on the back end and we had a little look at it in the admin panel, we could see that it was stored in our table with the paragraph tags and all of that HTML formatting because it's a rich text field. So because we don't, if we display it the way that it is now, it will actually have all of that in there. So we need to provide it some functionality in order for it to render as normal text, but to actually have our formatting instead. So to do that, we can use the pipe character and we can say safe. So this will then go ahead and load. So the next one then is we want our div for our instructions. So we'll have an instructions class and we will also give this padding three to match the one above. So we'll create a new heading two element and we will give this heading of instructions and we will create a paragraph tag and load through our recipe instructions. Now we will load this through the same way as we did the ingredients by using safe Okay, so this is our recipe ingredient. So now what we want to do is we want to go back to our recipes list page. So you remember we made the anchors and we want to be able to click this and it take us to that specific page. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say that the URL for this is our recipe underscore detail which is what we named our view now what we need to do differently here is if we go back to our urls.py you remember we said that we're going to send through the primary key so we need to add that into our call so we'll go back into the recipes and from here we can say recipe.id so because we're looping through everything here and that's creating an anchor for every single element each recipe will be a single object and it will have its own unique id so each of those cards will load and the recipe id will be corresponding to the record that is loaded in that iteration when creating the anchor so the last Oh, I've somehow managed to close my terminal. I've no idea how I did that. Um, last thing that we need to do now is we need to come into our base.css file and update that with our new styling rules for the classes we just created. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our recipe info. So we're doing this mobile first, so we're going to give it a display flex and we're going to give the flex direction column because on a mobile we want this to stack and we will justify the content to the center. So we'll then target our recipe container and this one will also be display flex and a flex column. So we'll then target our ingredients, our instructions, and our recipe detail. And we'll give all of these a width of 100%. We'll then target our recipe image. That's just ing. We'll give this one a display of flex and we will justify the content center and align the item center. We'll then target our recipe pick. We'll give this a width of 100% and a height of auto. So we're now going to create a media query. So I'm going to make a media query for a min width 62.5m. 
and within here we're going to target our recipe image we're going to set that to 40% we'll give it a margin 0 auto we'll then target our recipe detail and that is going to take up the other 60% as they are going to sit side by side in a row on a large screen so we'll give it a padding of 2 REM we will then target our recipe container and we're going to set the flex direction of this to a row we will also need to target our recipe info as this is where our recipe image and our recipe detail live so we'll need to set that to a flex direction of row as well and we'll give it a border and we'll say one pixels solid and our variable black So the last thing we want to do then is we want to set the ingredients and instructions. So we'll give the ingredients a width of 33.33 so that it takes up a third of that container that is now in a row. And then we will lastly target the instructions and that can take up the remaining two-thirds of 66.66%. I'm going to open a new terminal now and go ahead and start our run server. So now when we go into our recipes tab and click we can see our edit and delete buttons and our site should be responsive and stack on our smaller devices. So the only thing that I can see here is our cuisine type is not showing so we will need to fix that. So we'll flip back over to VS Code and have a look in our recipe detail and see what that issue is. Ah, typo. As per normal, so in our model it's cuisine types, not cuisine. So we flick back over now and just refresh that, and there we have European. So that is an error on my part when I was creating the choices. Um, so what we can do here instead of altering our model choices is we can apply the title within the template to uppercase the first letter. So if we go back to VS Code and here we can use our pipe character and we can say title. So if we switch back one last time and refresh there we have it. So this concludes our recipe detail. In the next few videos we will be doing the edit and delete views.